Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the ultimate wooden survival treehouse. In Minecraft. This treehouse is absolutely huge. It has so many floors and rooms, you're not going to remember where you put anything. <laughs> Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. At the base of the treehouse, we have access to a small separate survival house. The first room is a storage area. Branched off to the right, we have a bedroom. If we climb up the center of the tree, we'll find a special smelting slash smoking slash blasting area and above it a specialized crafting area if we exit and work our way up the side of our treehouse do, 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 we will eventually find a farm and another room this is a farming room Above it is a farming supplies room. Above there is a brewing room. Further up the tree, we have another farm and another room. This one's just a general storage area. Finally, at the top of our tree house, we're able to climb the ladder, which takes us into the tree mansion. It's pretty cool up here. We have a huge enchantment library, places to keep our armor and hidden away ender chests. We have guest bedrooms on both sides. If we climb up into the final level of the house, we have more guest bedrooms, more storage, and access to the back and front balcony. What more could you want? And all of this for just $19.95 a month. I'm kidding. This doesn't cost anything. I do hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you are subscribed and you haven't already, please do click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, let's get started. Just before we begin building, ladies and gentlemen, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. Now, this is roughly the amount of ground space required, a 16 by 11 block area. Do feel free to make this grid in your world if you think it will help you out. But this does not compare to the amount of airspace that we are going to require to make the tree. We're going to be building this thing tall. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Make sure that you have all of those materials. Make sure you got enough of them. Make sure you're ready. And once you are, we can begin. Step 1, my tree living squirrel friends. Come all the way over to the front left hand corner of the grid. That is, if you've made it. If not, we're going to be starting very soon. Count from the front left corner of the grid to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And then inwards by one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the starting position. Place an oak wood on the ground. Looking down at the ground, I want you to place two oak woods back left diagonally. And extend back by two. One, two. Extend back right and diagonally by two. One, two. Go to the right by two. One, two. Extend forward and right diagonally by two. One, two. Extend forwards by two. One, two. And then extend forwards to the left diagonally by two. And then join together. What we are essentially making is a circle. This is the trunk of the tree and the core of the tree house. We are going to first of all focus on making the trunk. My trunk is going to be about 50-ish blocks high. I'm going to add 49 oak woods on top of the pre-existing oak wood circle, like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. 
perfect. That is, roughly speaking, about as high as the treehouse is going to get. It will get a tad higher because we are building a house on top of there, but that is how high I want mine to get. A quick side note, you can make the treehouse as tall as possible. I will show you all the techniques that you can use and keep repeating to make your treehouse reach the sky limit if you prefer. But this is high enough for me. You of course want to raise up all of the other oak woods as high as the first row. That's going to take some time, it's a tumultuous task. Once it's been done, we should be left with something that should look. After some time, you will eventually end up with something that should resemble this. Kinda reminds me what I saw in the toilet this morning. Once you have made the trunk of your tree, the next thing that we're going to do is focus on the platform at the top of the tree. Now, the platform is rather easy to make, and here's why. You want to find the front of your tree. You want to take the top front and top back of your tree, and extend eight rows of birchwood planks outwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from the top front and the top back of the tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, once you have extended the front and the back outwards, you want to extend the left and right sides outwards as well, each by 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the same for the opposite side as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the end result, it should look like this. I don't even know what to compare that to. It kind of reminds me of Kaplunk. The point of this is that you can connect all of these rows together using right angles and you can make a big rectangular shaped platform. I want to mention two things. The platform isn't going to remain rectangular. It's just quite a bit easier to shape it once you have a whole solid shape. It's much easier than to, to take like a big empty, complete shape and shape it, than it is to build shape into something. That goes for most things in Minecraft. It's also worth mentioning that if you would like a larger, or I wouldn't really recommend a smaller platform because the house is quite large, but if you want a larger platform then, you can indeed make it bigger, but I wouldn't make it smaller. So, this is something that somewhat resembles a Christmas present. This has to be filled in using birchwood planks. That'll take a while. So, once you have successfully filled in your platform, we can begin to shape it a little bit. So, the platform is a big rectangle, and you may be happy with the shape, and you can keep it like this if you like. But I'm going to take each corner, and equally, I'm going to just shave off some of the birch planks. Now, I'm doing this in twos, as you can see. So kind of like two, two. Like if I shave off two blocks here, leave these two alone, shave two off here. So I'm kind of creating an oval shape. So just remove two or so blocks at a time. You can, you can use different methods for this. You can use freeze, you can use all sorts, but there's just something about ovals that I quite like when it comes to tree houses. And I think that I'm going to keep that. So that's gonna be the same on this side as well. So it's really just about slowly shaving like two blocks off at a time until we end up with about four, I think. Uh, about four or so diagonal bits of yeah, four or so diagonal bits of like two blocks. Now you can soften this corner a bit if you like by just knocking one block off and uh, that will actually make the corner look a bit softer. You'll see what I mean in a moment, but that's what I'm going to do with the whole thing. Uh, you're more than welcome to completely change the shape of this. As I mentioned, you can keep it a rectangle, you could make it a square, you could, and I'm going to knock the corner off there too, you could make it all sorts of different shapes, patterns, you can make it bigger or smaller. Again, I, I really wouldn't make it smaller. That'd be, uh, that'd be a big no-no for me. But uh, you could absolutely make it bigger. You could make it huge, put some farms up here. There's so many things that you can do. It's a really 
um, versatile design, that's a big word, and uh, it really can be shaped in numerous ways. So there you go, that's quite a bit softer. It kind of looks like an eye and it's freaking me out. But that's what we want to have. And we're going to place a little bit of oakwood slabs all the way around the top of it. We're going to what is essentially trim the top side of the platform using the oakwood slabs. And on top of the oakwood slabs, once we have successfully done this, we're going to place some oak fence. It's also worth mentioning as well, because I actually do this in the build itself. You can inverse the colours if you like, and what inverse basically means is swap around. So you can place an oak platform and trim it with birch. You can do the same with the house, and as I mentioned, I'm using oakwood fence on top of the trim as well. So you could swap the colours over, you could use different colours, you could make this some sort of modern treehouse. I've been wanting to make one of those recently, actually. A design like this would actually work quite well, because it is kind of like a cool modern-ish sort of design, especially in the design of the tree. Everything else, not so much, but the actual like tree itself is kind of like modern looking with the glass windows and such. So, I, I think that we could actually easily swap this over to a modern design if we wanted to. Once you have completed the platform, you will end up with something that should look like this. Our next step is to make the house atop the tree. It's quite easy to make, although it looks complicated. So, to make the house on the top of the tree, you have to work your way up to the top front of the trunk. It's these three blocks right here on the front of the tree house. On top of these blocks, I want you to place three rows of oak wood, or oak planks. One, two, three. I want you to extend the whole row forwards by just one row, so like you have a square like this, and it's a 3D square. I want you to extend the left and right sides out at the back using two upside down birch stairs with an oak plank on the end. So extend the back two corners, two upside down birchwood stairs, and then oakwood planks on the end. You want to raise up those planks each by three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then join them together at the top. You'll have something which should look like this. Now, these empty spaces are actually windows, so you can fill them in using glass pane. This big block here in the middle is a doorway. You can make enough space to actually place a door there. Now, I think that we will have to knock out the upper left and upper right corner oak plank blocks to place the window. The window is fairly easy to place. It starts pretty much up left diagonally and up right diagonally from the two remaining oak plank rows. The birch planks extend forwards, or birch slabs, and then they extend inwards, upwards, inwards, up, like this. And then we simply extend them backwards, so we would have had to have gotten rid of the previous oakwood blanks. Once you have this shape, we want to take the top two corners of the shape, the top left, top right, and we want to place two oakwood planks behind, one, two, one, two. You want to extend those oak planks upwards each by three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. And then we're going to join them together at the top, like this. I just want you to fill the top or the bottom of this shape in with a couple of rows of birchwood planks, because this is like a balcony. You can even place either oak fence or birch fence around it. I'm going to recommend some birch fence. I don't actually have the block on me, but... I'm 100% positive it will be in the item list. There we go. The area here is going to be an entrance out onto the balcony. That's what the middle block is. So I think that if we get rid of the oakwood slabs for a bit and grab the oak door and we place a door right in the middle, if we place oakwood planks left and right of the door, join the bottoms of the rows together and then place some glass in between, that should look quite nice. Very good. The next thing that we're going to do is extend the upper corners of this shape, same thing that we did down here, up to here. We're going to extend these corners backwards by four. 
one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. I then want you to extend those fourth blocks outwards by three. One, two, three. And I think that we'll do the same on the opposite side as well. One, two, three. You then want to extend those blocks backwards each by four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Like this. And the shape that we then end up with, we want to extend these blocks inwards by three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We then want to extend them inwards by two. One, two. One, two. And then you can actually join them across in the middle. I know, it's a very bizarre shape. But well, it's a nice shape. Perfect. So, what we're going to do is we're going to extend these corners at the back down to the ground. Or the platform. Which I still qualify as the ground. Like this. Because the shape of the treehouse at the top is actually quite peculiar, really. What I then want you to do is I want you to take these two inner corners and extend them each down by three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then join them together, like that. So you can see, it's g this is a freaky shape. It kind of looks like an owl there at the front. You can kind of see the beak and the eyes. <laughs> anyway, what we also want to do is we want to add two rows of oak wood planks coming out of the back diagonally, kind of like joining the bottom of this area together like this, right? Now it looks like a frog and an owl. What we then want to do is we want to then fill the inside of this shape in, one row inwards. And I would recommend leaving the couple of blocks up at the top here kind of exposed, like these ones. You can fill them in with glass. They, they can be windows. You can do this on the left and right sides. I want you to extend the sides down here, coming inwards towards where this little balcony area is. I might not have mentioned it yet, but this area, like this is a balcony. If you fill the bottom two rows in, or bottom three it might be, oh no, two is fine, fill the bottom two rows in, then we can place a door in the middle, equal and opposite to the opposite side of the balcony, and you can place oak planks left and right of the door, and then you can kind of add some oak planks around and form two windows, so with some white stained glass paint. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of birchwood fence to kind of section the area off, just like that. So, what's also worth doing, and by the way, I mean, we're cracking on with this quite nicely, really. That's, that's not a bad frame. What we also have to do, is we have to join a few parts of the house downwards. But first, we have to take this outward corner here on the right and the left, and we have to extend it downwards by three. One, two, three. And then we're going to extend forward by two. One, two. And then we're going to go down forwards two, and then down, forwards two, down, forwards three, one, two, three, and then we're going to curve to the left by about three as well, one, two, three. So you'll have this sort of shape right here, which looks preposterous, but trust me. Come all the way over to onto the opposite side and do the same thing. So we're going to take this corner and extend it down by about three, one, two, three, forwards by two, one, two, down one, forwards two, down one, forwards two, down one, forwards by three, in by three. So we just want the same shape on both sides. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to fill the outside walls in using oak planks because I want to start creating some walls. I want to create a solid shape so that you guys kind of get the idea. So you fill in the outside walls, but you also fill in these interior walls here using oak planks as well where you can. You can shape the inside of the house later, but for now this is going to create some clarity in what we're actually building because I know it looks a little bit weird, like if you just take a look at the shape it's like, what am I even doing? So we also want to do this on the opposite side, we want to fill these outer walls in with oak planks, just like this. And we also want to fill in that interior wall. So this is the outer wall, of course, and then this interior wall. 
the reason that we need these walls here and now is because not only is there an addition to the left and right side of the house, there's more house to come, uh, but the inside walls are important because there's two entrances up here. So, there we go, that's what we kind of have at the moment. The next thing we want to do is create a walkway, starting from the bottom here, coming almost all the way up, pretty much all the way up to the top really actually. So I'm going to start with birchwood stairs at the bottom here, I'm going to place a couple of rows of birchwood planks, extending backwards, like that. And then I'm going to keep repeating this, I'm going to place like birchwood stairs every time that the oakwood plank kind of like ascends, meaning gets higher. And then I'm just going to create a step using some birchwood planks like this. And then the birchwood planks can extend backwards. We'll have a couple of rows like this. And then a couple of oakwood doors at the top. Or you can you can sink them in one row if you like, but I, I probably wouldn't recommend it. If you wanted to do that, if you wanted that effect, I'd place them backwards. So that we don't really give up any space. Perfect. Additionally, we want to do the same on this side as well, of course. So that means pretty much it works out that every time you have a step upwards, you want to actually place some birch stairs. And then behind those stairs, you just want to create flat ground using some birchwood planks, just like this. And it wants to extend inwards because this is where the floor to the second story of the treehouse is going to be. And we'll actually be able to break through and like we'll connect just like that. So that'll, that'll give you some perspective. And we can place a couple of oak doors backwards this time just to create a bit of depth. Like it just looks a little bit cooler right and if you're placing a door here i'd probably do the same and this area is a bit flat as well so i'd probably do the same here as well place the doors either backwards or where you can like with the front you can place it one row inwards and it just creates a little bit of depth i'm also going to place a little bit of birch fence around the tops of the bottoms of these stairs just because it seems appropriate and now we have to make two additions to the left and right side of the house. It's actually one addition, but it's the same one on both sides. So all we're going to do is you can see this bit on the right side, and it will be on the left, of oakwood planks here that kind of like sticks upwards beyond everything else. Follow it down to the platform. Once you hit the platform, you want to go left one, and then place one, two, three oak planks place one going up, oak door next to it, oak planks next to the door, extend backwards one, two, three, four, and join to the middle of the house. I want you to place an additional row on the back here. We're going to have a window right in the middle here, so that's just going to be like a stained glass pane, and then we can stick an oak plank on both sides. And then there's just going to be a little window next to the door as well, and an oak plank. And that's all there is to it. You'll see why that room is so small a little bit later on. But we want to do the same on the opposite side as well. So, you find the big sticky up bit where the doors are on the upper, on the upper level. Follow it down. Forwards one. One, two, three oakwood planks coming outwards. Flare up. Oak door next to it. Two oakwood planks next to that. One, two, three, four, we go backwards by, connect to this back wall, add another row on top, place an oak plank left and right, glass in the middle, glass next to the door, oak plank next to the glass. So we have something which should look exactly like this. We want to give this thing a little roof, and that's why we only have it two blocks high. So the way that we give it a roof is that we place a row of birchwood slabs, coming upwards and outwards diagonally on both sides. And then we extend the slabs upwards and inwards like this. I'm just going to create the frame and then we'll fill it all in later. So it'll look like this. You're going to have to, where necessary, fill in the center blocks using some oak planks. So this side and also this side as well. So I'm gonna show you where all of the outlines for the roofs go. We're also going to have to make a small addition to the middle center part of the house. But you'll be glad to know that we have actually completed a large amount of this build. So there's going to be two little roofs on both sides like this. 
there's going to be a rather large big part of the roof on the front as well. So the front is going to be the same thing. It's going to be birchwood slabs, this time sitting off of the sides of the like the front middle, like this. And then we're going to extend the birchwood slabs up and inwards. I may, in fact, use this roof a little bit too much. Maybe. But I love it so much, and it's a very easy roof to make. So you can see on the front, it looks a little bit bigger. And in my opinion, a little bit better as well. Like, this roof looks really cool when, when it's a particular size, like this. We're also going to want to utilize this roof, by the way on the two little sides here so you can extend the birchwood slabs outwards and then you can kind of apply it to the sides like this so we want to have something it will look like that essentially like on these sides and I'm going to do the same on this opposite side as well and then we can figure out what we're going to be doing around the back because there are a couple of options that we can do on the back of course the back's a little bit strange and there's even a little part down there at the bottom. So there we go, we've got the two little side roofs taken care of as well. And I actually need to remind myself what I did at the back. Oh, on the back all we're going to do is we're going to join it together, of course. So on the left and right at the back we're just going to join it together. If you wanted to make it look a little bit fancier, you could even copy the front. I think you could copy the front of the roof, right? If you wanted to make the back look a little bit fancier. Uh, and that would mean that you'd even have a little bit more headroom. It might actually look a little bit better. I did decide in the plans to make it a certain way, but doesn't that look a little bit cooler? And then all you would have to do is extend it backwards and connect it to this part of the roof here. And we just have to make sure that there is enough, enough that would connect their solid blocks. Okay, so you just have to make sure that you placed enough oak wood planks. I was kind of like eyeballing the roof there to figure out how it how it'd like connect backwards, but that's how it'd look, and that'd look pretty cool. There's also a little roof down here just for this little part here, um, and that's just a couple of rows of virtual slabs like this, right around this little overhanging part like this. That looks fine. I mean, you could even maybe we could even use birchwood stairs. Maybe would that look all right? A little bit of birchwood stairs overhang on the left and right for that upper row. Doesn't look too bad if you ask me. Gives us a little bit of a diversifier of a material. That's not the right way to use that word, but I just did it anyway. And that looks pretty good. And honestly, that's a pretty cool looking house. All we have to do is just join all of the roofs together. But there's one thing that I want to do before I join the roofs together, you see, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very important part of this. It, it will make the house look so, 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 so much better. So, you may remember, earlier, we did have a trunk. I want that trunk to extend out of the top of the tree. Now, nobody is saying that the trunk has to, in its entirety, make sense and extend out the top of the tree, right? But I want there to be an illusion, and we're going to have to kind of crush this illusion a little bit because you can see it doesn't work very well because of how we've positioned the top of the house. But you kind of, what you want to have is a visible look out of the top of your tree that looks as though that the trunk is extended and fed through up towards the tree. So extend the blocks that you can without having to destroy any of the house, okay? and just then make the shape above where the rest of the trunk will be. So something like that, right? However, the thing is, I'm now going to alter the shape of the tree because if you can see, like these are interfering too much with the roof of the house. So what I'm gonna do, and I did this on the original guy, so it, it's gonna look fine, don't worry. I'm gonna knock off the front half of the tree. I'm gonna shorten the front part and I'm gonna just extend it inwards like this. So it was, it's gonna look a little something like that. It will look a little bit flatter. And I'm gonna feed it into the roof at the front. And uh, honestly, like you're not gonna be able to tell the difference very much at all because we just want the illusion that the tree extends up and outwards. You can even curve it a little bit by altering the shape even more and by making the sides a little bit flat. Like, it, most of this is going to be covered up by leaves anyway. It's just that we want to see that the tree is in some sort of way involved, if that makes sense. So, we want to have something which should look like this. And we want to connect the roof to the tree as well. So, that's, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So, 
All in all, ladies and gentlemen, what I've got to do, now that we've kind of like got a, what I would refer to as a, a faux trunk, meaning fake, um, all we want to do is connect all of the roof part together. So let me do exactly that for you. Join all the roofs together, the left, right, and all of the middle part of the roof. Join it all to the tree trunk. So all in all, once you have connected all of those roofs together, once you have joined them to the trunk of the tree, which looks suspiciously smaller than the trunk just below us, but trust me, it won't make much of a difference, then this is what you will end up with. And once you have completed that, ladies and gentlemen, now once you have done all of that, that leaves us just one job left up here. And that is to add the leaves all the way up at the top of the treehouse. Now, I'm going to use oak leaves for this. And what I'm going to recommend that you start doing is just about at the top-ish of the trunks, maybe a couple of rows higher than the actual roof itself, maybe, maybe about here or so. I'm going to recommend that you make a shape using your leaves. Now, I would suggest making a shape that is similar-ish to the platform that we have down below, just, just below us, right? Now, if you make a platform with the leaves that is at least as big as the platform, I'd probably a bit bigger, I'm going to start off with a shape that is about the same size, just because it's kind of easy to trace. You're going to want to just make the shape out of leaves, about the same size as the platform, if not a little bit bigger, and it will complement the platform very, very much. Then you'll know that you have made the leaves big enough. But it all starts off with one very particular shape, and that's that's all we're going to do. So we're just going to have like a big uh, oval shape of leaves. I've kind of overran the platform already, but that's that's okay. We're not exactly trying to trace. We're, we're trying to create uh, its own individual shape, and we actually connect it back together. So if we take a look up above, that's perfect. That's not too bad at all. So you can see it's it's ever so slightly bigger. You can make it bigger than that, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it about the same size, right? So you can see it kind of halos around the platform. I think I will make it a little bit bigger, right? Actually, just, uh, just to kind of like uh, show my point. So... Just, just a little bit bigger. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be huge. But, uh, I do have a feeling, I've never done this, I have a feeling if it was, like, say, 30-40% bigger than the, the actual platform below, I think that that'd actually look really good. It'd let you alter it a bit more as well, like, in comparison to, like, smaller leads. So, let's say that we start off with an oval shape. Let's say that we're happy with the shape. Each of our shapes will look different, so there's no point in really just, you know, there's no point in, like, saying that you go two blocks here, you go two blocks there. You want to make a shape roughly akin to this, a big oval above your platform to match the shape of the platform. I'd recommend filling it in with leaves. That'll take a while. Perfect. We now have something that looks kind of like a messed up music disc. Now that we have this, ladies and gentlemen, we can shape this. First of all, I would recommend shaping the under part of the tree. It's something that a lot of people don't think about. But you can add detail to the under part of the tree, as well as the sides and the top. If you simply add a few patches of leaves, kind of like this, spread around, some can be bigger, some can be smaller, some can be... You can even just leave it flat if you want to, honestly. But if you add this, this sort of detailing to the bottom of your tree, and the more of it that you add, the better it will be. That is something that I can say when it comes to tree houses, it, it, it's almost always the same. The more of something you add when it comes to the tree, the more time you put into the leaves, like the sides and everything like that, the more time you spend on it, the better it'll probably look. Now, there will come a point in time when you're spending too much time on it and you're like, mm, is, is this even looking better? But if you can kind of see how it can all blend together, you can use the bottom and the top part of the tree to create some cool details. So you want to do that. First of all, I'm going to recommend, like I said, just add some patches of oak leaves underneath the tree. You can refine it later. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can take a look at it later and you can be like, I really hate this, but, <laughs> you know, and then and then that'll inspire you to change it. Uh, I'd recommend adding a little bit more leaves, kind of like centered towards the tree as well, just to cover up um, the, 
What's the best word to put to, to use with this? The disparity in the tree trunk between the top and the bottom, you can kind of like cover it up by using some leaves around the center of the tree. That's the first thing that I'm going to recommend to you before I go to work on this. So we work on the under part of the tree. We add a few layers of leaves up on top of the tree. So you know how we kind of have like an oval shape for the top outside part of our tree? Well, we want to continue that top oval shape, except we slowly want to bring the oval one row-ish inwards. But we, we still want to maintain the shape of the oval, but what the idea is, is that we want to extend it up and in. And we're going to do this a few rows. So, like, that's that's a good example already of, like, how we're kind of going to do it. We're going to add, uh, extend it up in a few rows. And then, like, if we, like, just to kind of preempt what, what will be coming next, we'll be, like, adding a couple rows. It's, it's probably, we'll end up doing about two or three rows or so, extending up and inwards. And then we'll put a top on it. And you're also going to want to, um... You're going to want to mess about with the sides of the tree as well. So not only underneath, not only on top, not only... You want to, like, literally, like, you want to make kind of like this sort of shape around the side. Almost kind of like a really, really messed up flying saucer sort of shape. I think that this thing escaped from Area 51 when everybody stormed it. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what this is the eco UFO, <laughs> and uh, this is uh, this is what we want to do. So very, something very similar to that, and you can already see how that looks. Th that don't look too bad already, does it? That that looks pretty good, and we've barely put any time into it. So I want you to use all of those techniques to kind of create your own tree top. We've got our shape in place. Add leaves underneath to the left up on top, create kind of like a sort of like domey, oval, 3D shape, kind of like resembling a, an M&M or a Smarty or whatever, and that's kind of what we want to have. So let's, let's do that ourselves and then let's take a look at this thing. So this is the sort of effect that I'm looking for with the leaves. You can see that we have a decent amount of detailing underneath without giving up any of the detail of the house. You can see that the sides of the leaves as well are actually quite random and the top has a flat but shaped surface. And I think that that's perfect, especially when you look like from down up above. I think that that looks great. I could put more time and effort into that, but this is my second one. You guys get the idea. You're going to want to do that for yourself until you are inevitably happy with it. So, once you have completed all of the leaves for your treehouse, the next thing that we're going to do is make an additional mini house at the base of the tree. So that's all of the work up there complete. We're now going to make the bottom and then join it together somewhere in between. So come all the way to the base of your treehouse once you've reached the point that I'm at. I then want you to come all the way down to the bottom front right side of the tree, which is like right here, you guys can see the bottom right side front part of the trunk of the tree. And you want to place a virtual plank extending out from it. Extend the virtual plank upwards by two, one, two, right two, down two, like that. We're then going to extend the right side of that backwards by two rows like this, so it's touching the trunk of the tree. And then we're gonna extend that row to the right by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're then going to extend the birch wood backwards by one, two, three, four, five. And then we can join it to the back of the tree, just like that, so it'll just join right there. And I'm just going to add a couple of rows of birchwood planks on top of this. I'm going to add one window to this part. You're more than welcome to add more windows and more details to this little lower part of the tree, tree house. But I, I'm quite happy with having a big window right in the middle of the front. And then a little bit of white stained glass pane for the window. And then a little bit of oak trap doorage left and right of the window. This is where it differs. This window looks different from every other. And then additionally, I'm thinking about just placing a little bit of birchwood stairs underneath the span of the window. Just to kind of like, because I really like how that looks. I think that that flows quite nicely. Uh, we've got to do the roof to this. So the roof for this, uh, we're, the side roof is one row higher and outwards than the actual side, like where all of the windows are. So we just want to have a row of oakwood slabs extending out and above. 
You want the same thing on the back as well, like you just want a row of oak wood slabs like this. And then of course we just want to take the edge and we want to extend up and in until it'll eventually connect it out, uh, together just like this. And then you can use a mixture of oak planks and also oak, oak slabs where applicable to join it to the tree. And I'm just going to place some birch wood, uh, some birch wood there just to kind of like connect everything together. So here and then oak wood slabs here and then also here on this opposite side. So that's looking pretty good, I do think so. And then we also have the little entrance part here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to place oakwood slabs left and right of the door, extending outwards. And we're going to do the same thing here. So the door is going to be a little bit higher than usual, but that's uh, that's because I kind of want this effect right here. And just to give some clarity, I've got like literally like there's going to be an oak door like buried in there too. And I realized that this area is a little bit dark, isn't it? It is a little bit dark. So if you like, what we can do, just for the meantime, I I'm, I'm going to take these off eventually because uh, we will be getting some light. I'm just going to place a couple of torches running up the tree. I'm going to do it on the front and the back because uh, it, is, it is a little bit dark. Uh, and, and this is just going to make it so that we can see a little bit easier But once we actually make some windows for the inside of the tree and once you start placing light like it's it's not going to be a problem at all So that's the little uh, that's a little house at the bottom So now that we have the house complete ladies and gentlemen We can now work on how we're going to get from the bottom of the tree house all the way up to the top of the tree house. I'm going to show you how to make what I would call a spiral staircase leaning all the way up the trunk of the tree. So the spiral staircase begins down at the bottom here, just left of the house. And we're going to start off by placing an oak wood plank in the corner here, in the front left hand corner of the tree. Extend that plank upwards. Take the bottom plank and place three birchwood stairs going left with the same oak wood plank configuration left of it. This is the beginning of the staircase. This entire staircase sequence is repeatable ladies and gentlemen. So once I've showed you how to make it once, you'll be able to repeat it again and again and again. So no matter how big your tree is, if you keep repeating what I'm going to show you, then you'll be able to make this all the way up to the sky and beyond. Okay. So here's what you do. First, we're just going to add a row of birch wood planks directly behind all of these stairs. The staircase follows some simple rules. Rule number one, the staircase is two rows thick, always. It is at least two rows thick out of the side of the tree. Rule number two, the staircase on the flat sides of the tree where you have the rows of three is when we make it higher. This is when we place stairs on the side of the tree. Following rule number one, we want to now make a platform. Now that we're not on the side of the tree, you take the third set of stairs and you make a platform that is two rows thick, always going around the side of the tree. What this comes out to be is from that third set of stairs, you place three rows of birchwood planks coming backwards, you leave one block off the corner, and then you have like three rows of birchwood planks going left towards the next side of the tree. And following that rule, we place three rows of birchwood stairs coming upwards along the side of the tree, and then we place our platform which, as you guys know, it has to at least be two rows thick everywhere. So if you add three rows of birch, leave one off the corner, and then another row here, if you have three on this side, three birch wood planks on that side, you can't go wrong. And then we're on this side of the tree again. And we place the birch wood stairs. These are two rows thick, of course. And then we wrap around. And again, it's the same thing. It's very, very repeatable, this is, ladies and gentlemen. It keeps going and going and going. So that is one whole rotation of the tree. We have pretty much, we have it on every single side of the tree. We have managed to create our platform. We know what we're doing. We can place the stairs. We have it going all the way around the tree now, right? So we've got like a whole loop almost. What's also worth mentioning is the fact that we're going to place oakwood planks along the side of these stairs and birchwood planks. 
So we're not going to use anything really too fancy here. We're going to use oakwood planks to simply place along the sides of the birchwood planks and birchwood stairs areas. So it's actually going to look a little bit messy really in comparison to the rest of the build. But I think it reinforces the staircase area and I think it makes it look a, a kind of like chunky. Which I like the look of. Additionally, on the flat parts of the platform and this little area here, I'm going to place either birchwood fence or oakwood fence. I haven't decided which I like more, so I'm actually going to alternate between the two as I send up the spiral staircase, like this. I think it actually looks cool to kind of like have a mix. This whole house itself is just like a mix of the two, so I don't see why we shouldn't mix them. Additionally, I'm also going to place or replace the ascending part of the staircase. I'm going to replace with upside down oakwood stairs. You can even place upside down birchwood stairs underneath the staircase. This is a very unnecessary change. However, I do think it breaks the staircase up a little bit. So instead of one just big mold of just solid plank blocks, I do think it looks good in the fact that it's, you know, it just breaks up the monotony of the same shape. Or that's that's what I'm thinking anyway. So you can apply that or or you don't coming all the way down. It's, it's completely up to you. And uh, obviously you'd, you'd want to start from the bottom and like work your way up to the top or do the inverse of that. But as long as you end up with this, you should be fine. Now here's the thing, that is how you make the staircase. I think that we've all got a grasp on that. That's the repeatable patterns that you can keep repeating. However, I want to also show you how to make a platform. We have to go a bit higher before we can make one. Because the platforms, I always want to be on the right side of the tree. So the next time that we get to the back of the tree and we're like on the opposite side that we are now, we're go I'll show you how to place a platform. And uh, it's, it's going to be quite easy as well. So let's continue our pattern. So one, two, three, three blocks there. And then a set of stairs. I'd recommend doing this part first because it's easiest to do this. And then one, two, three, add an extra row there. And now we're going to be on the back of the tree. So one, two, three, just like this. So I'm just going to make all of the rest of the platform. I'm just going to make the part that goes around. We're going to add all of the birch fence and all of that. And I'm just going to show you after we've just added this trim because I want to make it in, in completion. I don't want to half do this. I want to uh, com continue on the way that we have. I want to make sure that every part looks as good as the previous part, except for the fact that I've already forgotten the birch stairs. There's a lot to remember with this, but hopefully, you know, once you've done it enough, it'll kind of like drum into your mind a little bit. And we're not missing any here. And we last used birch wood fence, so I'm gonna swap to oak wood fence. So I'm gonna do this going around the top here, and this going around the top here. So. There's two of these platforms, ladies and gentlemen, and they end up in the same way. You can see how much spiral staircase we have, right? You can see that we started down there on the left, we've done one whole loop, and then we've done a half loop almost. It's like one and a half loops. And we've ended up here. And what I want to do here to make the platform is I'm going to extend the birch wood stairs forward I'm going to extend the right one forwards by nine birchwood planks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to go left ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to extend forwards until I would be able to join to this part of the tree. So not this flat part here, this part of the tree. I'm going to fill the middle of this in using birchwood planks, okay? I'm going to completely fill the middle of this in using birchwood planks. And once this has been done, we're also going to take the corners off of it as well. So now I've got a big flat area, I'm going to knock the corners off. I think I only have to take the two end corners and then we can place all it is it's just oakwood planks like you can apply the oakwood slabs if you like because it is a big flat area I'm not doing that so 
Now you can see that's how you can make a platform, and you can make that as big or as small as you like. But that's how it goes, ladies and gentlemen, and then you can just keep repeating the pattern. So again, you, you can pretty much continue on from where you started off. Now we can just place stairs from the platform leading upwards on the flat part. You can place oakwood stairs, uh, oakwood planks next to the uh, birchwood stairs, and life goes on. And you can keep repeating that. And I'm also going to add a trim around this, I reckon. What did I last use, ladies and gentlemen? Can anyone remember? Birchwood. So I'm going to use Oakwood, uh, Oakwood fence around this part of the platform. Later on, I'm going to add. Uh, I'm going to show you what you can do to some parts of the tree. I'm going to show you how you can make a little farm and all sorts. But basically, what I'm now going to do, right, is I'm going to take what I've done and I'm going to do it one more time. Hopefully, I've shown you enough that you can repeat that as many times as you like. So I'm going to do another whole one about one and a half rotations of the tree i want to make it so that like the staircase goes around at least one more time and then i'm going to make another one of those and then i'll show you how to make the ladders all the way up to the top of the tree so i'm going to do exactly that ladies and gents you know how long that takes let me show you how it'll look once you have done that for yourselves i hope that you guys are able to follow along i'm sure that you guys all have grasped the process in which you gotta follow just to do the staircase and the platform now, eventually, once you have replicated what we have done down below, you will have made another platform. And that is where our platform and spiral staircase journey, at least with the size of this tree trunk, ends. You see, the way that we are finally going to break into the platform of our tree involves us placing a ladder now, the ladder is going to go right the way up the center of the tree here. And I'm actually going to dig out the oak wood. And I'm going to place an inlay of the birch wood planks here instead. And I'm going to place the ladder inside and up, just like that. And we'll break up into the top of the tree house. And I'll actually bring you just about where the front door is, which is quite convenient. So that is how eventually we're going to break into the top of the platform. Once you've eventually had enough of making a staircase, we're going to finish off the journey with the ladders. And then we're just going to make a small frame around this area as well. So we're just going to place a little bit of birch and then we're just going to place some oak wood planks just like around, just, just like this. You can even add a corner to it if you like. You can make it a bit curved. And then obviously you would also place a little bit of fence around it. And, and that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. So you can see we, we've basically just repeated what we did down below. I took you all the way up to this first platform. And, and then it's the same. It rarely is. It's just like repeat, 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 repeat. Keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. Eventually, place another platform in there somewhere near the top. And then you can have a set of ladders that literally takes you to the front door. <laughs> to the front door of your treehouse. Now, this all looks very, very dark at the moment, but we have got most of the structure in here. The last couple of things that I'm going to recommend, or at least show you how to do, and then you can decide, you know, whether or not you want to have these in yourselves. Okay, so on the two platformed areas, I'm going to recommend adding a farm, and also a way to get inside of the trunk of the tree. As you would have seen at the start of the video, the trunk of the tree is actually useful. It's made up of many, many rooms, all serving different purposes. So, I'm going to show you how to make those rooms. We need, for the farms, oak trapdoors, dirt, hoe, seeds, virtual planks, oak wood slabs, doors, glowstone, and some fence. Now, these are for a little something different, but it's still for the tree. So, what I'm going to do is, first of all, the room. The room begins with a door, and it's on the flat side of the tree. Basically, we're just going to make a frame, which is a three by three, with two spaces missing in the middle, birchwood area, gonna have a door on it so that people know that it's actually meant to be like you know entered and then we're gonna place the same roof that we use everywhere else so it's gonna be uh, oakwood slabs along the sides and slowly built up into this sort of shape something very similar to that and that what and what that will allow you to do is you'll be able to open this and I know it is very very dark in here isn't it and that will allow you to open this up and you'll be able to add a floor inside the trunk of the tree and you'll be able to have ladders leading all the way up to the next floors so on and so forth you guys will have seen that at the start of this video you can utilize the entire inside of the tree as well 
So that's perfect. So you can add that door down here and we'll add the same up above as well. But I'm also going to add a farm here because it adds a nice little bit of colour. So a few rows of dirt. And I do think it is only a few. Yeah, a few rows of dirt. Enough so that we can place wooden trap doors all the way around the edge of it. And all we're going to do after that is we're going to hoe the area and we're going to place seeds. But you might find that unless you do this next thing, you're not going to be able to place the seeds. Because what are we kind of missing so far? I'm going to give you a hint. It's very dark here. So what I'm going to recommend doing is hanging from the next platform or leaves or from something, some part of the tree. I'm going to recommend hanging a long row of oak fence slowly whittling down. You could even place it from here, say. But I'm going to I'm gonna have quite a long one here and then you can kind of see, you know, whether you like it or not. A row of glowstone and some oak trapdoors around that. Now, you can use a variety of trapdoors as well. You can, you can use spruce, you can use birch. I mean, I like quite a few of the trapdoors, so you can, you can have that. Or, like I said, you can hang it from, like, this part here. But what that should allow us to do, I think that will be enough light. We'll soon find out um, on whether or not we'll be able to plant seeds here because you need light, unfortunately, to plant seeds. You can't just, like, plant them underground. But I think that that's enough. That's perfect. So you can see that that actually improves the platform quite drastically. And the same can be said up here as well. So up here, like, we can add the door frame in. Right here. Not the middle two out. We can, I'm going to chuck a couple of glowstones just inside to keep it a little bit brighter. And then we can place our birchwood planks. And then we've got a fully fledged room. And depending on what part of the tree you're on, you can make, um, you know, you can make more than one room. Like, there's enough space here to add a ladder in and, uh, and you can add, like, another room in here. But we put a door on here, either there or maybe even forwards, maybe here. And then we simply just place the oak wood slabs creating a roof section just like this and that's all there is to it ladies and gents so right there perfect and then on this occasion it is actually light enough but just to kind of like go with my point like if we just place a few oak fence coming down it doesn't even have to be that low like it doesn't have to like touch the farm or anything you know but uh, it does look good as well and we can hang these all over the place i'll, I'll show you a little bit later on once uh, once i start like tweaking the details and stuff because we are rapidly approaching a point in which uh, we can just start adding details to this build ladies and gentlemen because we have done loads and loads and loads Believe it or not, I mean, we've made it like a huge, massive treehouse. We have a way to get up to it. We've got a way to get down. We've got some rooms. We've got two houses, two like full on houses attached to the treehouse. We've actually made like a massive build. And uh, it's kind of went by uh, kind of quickly, I think, or at least it has for me. I don't know about you guys. You know, we've, we this is pretty impressive. Like if you put this in the middle of a forest, like in a survival world or something, I mean, you would, woo. Can you imagine just seeing this out from the distance? But you guys get the idea, doesn't it look kind of cool like this? So you can see both of the farms, they're fully functional, that's looking great. So to add further details to the tree, oak leaves, birchwood stairs, white stained glass pane, and I also have the glowstone and the oak fence out just in case I do want to add more of the hanging lights. So. Why do I have the birchwood stairs and the white stained glass pane? Well, that's quite simple because, as I mentioned, we've got rooms all the way up the centre of the treehouse. So I'm going to recommend that every so often you place a row of four, dig out a row of four coming vertically up the tree, and place an upside down at the bottom and a regular facing birchwood stair at the bottom and top of the four block hole, and then place glass pane in there. And you can place these equally up the tree. I mean, that's kind of equal equidistant between the platform and the top of the house. Or you can place them a little bit randomly. But I'm, I'm going to try and place them about equal. And then that way, it will look quite nice balanced up the tree. And you can see it does make a difference. But what you would see make an, an even bigger difference is if we grabbed, say, torches. Right? Or some sort of light source. It doesn't really matter. And inside of the windows but to the left and right if you place torches you'll see that it actually does a decent job of lighting up that little part of the tree so you can do this coming all the way up of course so every time you place a window i'd recommend adding some sort of light source and it's actually going to light up that part of the tree you can see that's a lot lighter and brighter and the same can be said here now this is a bit of a weird section but what about here would you say is the middle guys 
I think it, I think it just about is. And then we can place the torches all, all the way up the inside of these. You, you'll obviously refine this, like when you start turning these parts into rooms and when you could start giving them individual purposes, you know, it's going to change a little bit, but you can see the difference, right? Just that little change by adding a light source inside of the tree with some windows really does lighten things up a bit. And we're going to do the same thing down below with the actual house as well. So, there we go. You can add windows all the way up your tree. And you can even do that on the back if you want. But I think uh, down at the bottom here it looks pretty good. And that lights up the trunk of the tree very, very nicely. You can add leaves coming up the tree as well. Now, where, you, where might you add leaves? You might be wondering to yourself. Well, underneath the flat part of the flat uh, platforms, for one. You can add a little bit of leafage. You can do this wherever you have, like, as I said, a flat part of the platform. I almost called it a fat form. The flat part of the platforms. That's a hard sentence to say. That's a tongue twister. You can place some leaves if you so choose. Doesn't have to be a lot of them. It can be all the way around the tree as well. Don't limit yourself just to the front. But you guys get the idea. I like to throw uh, choices at you. I, I like to give you guys a bit of an idea. And you'll notice, I mean, it makes the tree look a little bit greener. It makes it look a little bit more tree-like, really. It makes it look a little bit more real i guess is, is what you could say you know and it, it can come down as far as you like you can add as much detail as you like and uh just so that i'm not placing it just in the same places all the time it's just that that part's the visible part you know when you look at it from the angle that it looks best which is from like the front right hand side i think is the best way to look at it this house looks like the best from this angle like it's it's quite cool to see it like ride up the tree a little bit and you can even do the same up at the top here. I don't actually like this, by the way, um, up around here. But you can place a little bit of leaves, like, up at the top. Maybe if it's just on one side, you could place a whole, like, leaf... Like, a whole leaf platform underneath, like, the regular platform. I just don't like it, you know? But there's, there's nothing to say that you can't add a little bit of leaves just, like, up at the top. Maybe opposite to uh, the other side there. And a technique you can use, by the way, with the leaves as well, is you can add glowstone in the leaves. Like this. So, I know that it might look a little bit goofy, really, but at least you don't get to see the whole glowstone, but it does light up the platform. And that's a technique that you can use. I mean, not only do we have the huge hanging lights down here, and by the way, just to just to show you, you can continue that on. And where do we have the oak trapdoors? There, there we go. So, you, you can make these any length, of course, but you, you can continue having hanging lights everywhere. So, just like this. Here. Perfect. Here, here, just like that. So, that is nice. There we go. So, you can have that, like, ascending all the way down the tree. And I'd always recommend adding lights inside of the houses as well. Wherever you've got windows, because then that way it will be able to... Um, I, d I don't know the word, but you you'll be able to see the light extend outwards from the house, so to speak. So... Now, it'll like, now the house is lit up at the top of the tree, which looks really, really cool. Anywhere that you have, say, like an exit, like this, is a good place to have some light. So, you can see the light coming from the internals of the tree, and it just, like, uh, extends out externally. It Doesn't that look a lot better? And then we've, of course, got this, uh, these two windows here, which uh, we can take advantage of. And let's break through here as well, onto the opposite side. Guess we've got to go even further. This house is even bigger than I, than I thought it was, really. It's, it's kind of huge. And uh, now you can see, that's perfect. So now that the house is all nice and lit up as well, like you can see, that really makes a difference. It's, it's not taken that many details to really just make this house pop and pull together. And the last little part that we've just got to do involving light, this is all the way down at the bottom, and then we can start looking at, just got a break in here as well. Here we go. It's okay. I'm breaking into my own house, so it's, it's fine. There we go. And I'd like to add a little sum just next to this door as well. Perfect. And then you'll find that that's nice and lit up. And the whole build just goes together very, very nicely. And then you've just got to split up the interior into rooms, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, the only thing that I'm going to do, the last little bit of detail, and I do mean the last bit of detail, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to be doing any more after this, is I'm just going to clear the ground... And then I'll show you the little bit of little bit of detail that kind of complements the house a little bit. So let me clear out the ground and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
So we're just going to add a little bit of groundwork around the base of the treehouse. This is completely optional, but if you do want to do it, we need a shovel, leaves, flowers. We might even need some tall flowers as well and some water. So first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit of a pathway leading from the front entrance of the treehouse here and it's just going to wrap around and it's just going to connect to the side of the treehouse here as well. So just like that, so it's going to lead you from the entrance to the staircase. I'm going to place a little bit of leaves here, just like this, but it would actually look nice and this is where I said I might need the flowers, I didn't realise I might need them so fast. Like if you add a little bit of colour with some like double tall flowers like rose bushes or lilacs, I do believe are double tall as well. Uh, what else can we do? Well, we can do the same sort of effect around here, like we can create kind of like a bush area, kind of like curving, and I do mean curving, around the side of the house like this. And I mean, we could even apply the same sort of, we could even use the flowers as well, like that. That don't look too bad. And it's, it's about creating a curve, by the way. We don't want it to be square, we don't want it to be boxy, we're creating a curve. And we're also going to create kind of like what I would call a crescent moon shape. Of, we're going to create a hole, a crescent moon shaped hole that we're going to fill in with water around the base of the treehouse. Just because it will complement the shape of the treehouse very, very well and it will add another colour to the ground and it just looks a little bit more natural as well. It, it really does. So, like this sort of shape. Now, this is a messy shape, kind of like, kind of like a really disturbing banana, but. That's the sort of shape that we've kind of got going on. We're going to take a look at this from the sky because it might not be as bad as I'm imagining my head. Mm. Okay, that's actually not too bad. We're kind of getting there. We might even make it a little bit thinner, maybe. So, maybe about here. And then we're going to fill it with water. That's, that's the water. And the reason that we're filling it with water is because it adds a colour that we don't have. It breaks up the colour difference between the green bushes and it create it breaks up the colour difference between the green bushes and the grass around the treehouse and it just makes the bottom of the treehouse a little bit more visible and it does give that sort of nature aspect like if you take a look at it like it complements the shape and it, it, it just kind of highlights the bottom of the treehouse a little bit so says me and once you've done all of those details ladies and gentlemen I, I can't believe it we We've done. What do we do now? So this is what your treehouse will look like, ladies and gentlemen, once it has been 100% fully completed. We have every single aspect of this thing done. We have a big giant trunk. We have a staircase that leads us from the bottom to the top. We have a house at the bottom. We've got a huge luxurious tree mansion at the top of the treehouse. And we have leaves, hanging lights. We've even got a bit of decoration at the base. We even have farms ladies and gentlemen and interior trunk rooms this is crazy i hope that you've enjoyed building this as much as i enjoyed designing and building it for you <coughs> i do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did and you're new around here please do consider subscribing to the channel and if you have subscribed if you are subscribed please remember to click that little bell and that'll make sure that you get all of my videos sent directly to your sub box if you'd like to make any other tree houses by me please check out the card system the description below and i'll leave a link at the top of the comment section too for all of my other awesome tree houses i've made so many different kinds i think that you guys would really love the others that i've made as well if you're itching for more thank you so much for watching everybody I love you all very much. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.